Okay, let's install some batteries. Now this thing will supposedly work with lithium batteries, as far as I know. And these come with some fancy instructions, so let's check that out. Oh wait, first let's check the, the instructions for this, what is it, a Renogy Adventurer Solar Charge Controller. I think it's, is it a 30 amp one? Oh, I forgot what it was now. Yeah, 30 amp, which is good. And yes, it does have a setting for lithium batteries. Great. And with the batteries, I've got a product manual here. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Oh, wow. I think a lot of this won't be relevant to me because, all right. I'm just connecting batteries in parallel, nothing series. So I don't have to worry about a bunch of this stuff. You know what? This is the quick start guide, right? Operation guide for beginners. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I'm supposed to wear gloves. No, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, the batteries are shipped with only 30-50% of their capacity, although I think those have a little more than that, but whatever. Okay, please fully charge the battery before starting to use it. If I remember correctly, I need to charge each individual battery on its own, and then I can connect them to each other. Uh, avoid direct contact between the terminals. Okay, don't short circuit the battery because that'll not be good. Um, Okay, let's see. That's just obvious stuff. Make sure the battery is wired is properly wired. Okay, do not reverse the positive and negative connections. Right, 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 right. All right. Only connect with other similar batteries, not other brands or other sizes and stuff. Yeah, I have two of the, two of the same brand, same size batteries, so I should be able to connect them in parallel. Uh, let's see what this thing says. Okay, I already figured out. Take off those little plastic covers, put the bolts in, put the little red and black cappy things on. Test the battery voltage with the multimeter. Oh, I already did that too. And it was 26.4 volts, if I remember correctly. Okay, then fully charge the battery separately. So, yeah, charge each battery separately. <laughs> If it's not being used, recharge every three months, but I'm going to be using it, so not a problem. All right, we've got a bunch of stuff here. 100 amp hour battery, 25.6 volts. 2,560 watt hours. Ooh, charge current, 20 amps. Oh, that's great, because, well, I'm actually going to charge, yeah, I'm going to charge it with 20 amps, but I'm going to charge two batteries, so it'll only be 10 amps for each one, but whatever, it's under the, the recommended charge. Um, continuous discount current, 100 amps, I'm going to be below that, and I have two batteries, so it'll be 200, it'll still be below that, no problem, no problem. Things to know before using, always put the insulated covers on the, the post bolts, right, right, right. Charging methods, okay, let me, let me just read through this, this is going to... Okay, this is interesting. It says the voltage at different capacities. So when its capacity is 100%, it's 27 volts. This is presuming it's not being used or charged at the time, just the battery on its own. 27 volts when it's fully charged. 99% is 26.8. 70% uh, is 26.4. That's where they are right now. So they're 70% charged when I got them. And doo -doo -doo, down to 10% is 25.6 volts. Well, it's still pretty high for 10%, but then after 10%, the voltage drops off quickly. At 19 volts, it's 0%. I, don't, I can't let it get there because that'll wreck the battery. Uh, supposedly, you can use them down to 1% capacity at 21.6 volts. I think I would rather cut off at 10%. I don't, I don't need to like risk damaging the battery by <laughs> getting down to 1%. No, that's, that's too risky. I'd rather cut it off at 25.6 volts. Yeah. Um, I, does my charge control? I think my charge controller has a volt voltage readout on it. Although I'm, I'm also pretty good at paying attention. So, I mean, I want to use my capacity. I want to use like to, just the top 50% of my battery capacity, generally speaking, not go below that. So, you know, I, I like to play it safe with the battery so I don't damage them. You know, I would like to set the battery management system, the BMS in the battery, to cut off at 
capacity. So I don't get anywhere near, you know, one zero percent. However, I don't I don't think I can program that. At least I didn't see anything about that in here. Okay. Well I'll just have to pay attention. The other thing is I'm not I'm not running these these through an inverter that's gonna have a, a cutoff voltage. I'm running them through a speed controller for a motor. And maybe I can Maybe I can program a cutoff voltage on the speed controller. I'll have to look into that. If I can, then that would be great. Otherwise, I mean, I'm just going to pay attention. Like, I'm not an idiot. I can see what the voltage readout is, and that'll let me know. I'll just have to pay attention. Yeah, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so first step is I just need to charge each individual battery. So I'll take my charge controller there. I'll take my charge controller, connect it to the boat, connect one battery to it, and then connect the solar panels. Now with these, you're supposed to always connect the solar panels second, at least that's what the book just told me. So I connect it to the battery first, then the solar panels. So when I switch to charge the other battery, first I disconnect the solar panels, then disconnect the battery, then connect the other battery, then connect the solar panels. Okay. I don't even know how important that is, but it's telling me to do that, so I'm just going to do it. Although, before I start connecting wires, I should figure out where these things physically go in the boat. I know roughly where they go, but I guess I should go put them in place and get them all locked in. I have to, well, I know where I'm going to put them, and they, they're going to need some kind of cover so they don't get wet. All right, let's go put them in place. You know what? I want to put these batteries on a bit of shock absorption, and I think I can just use the packaging that came in. Beauty. Yeah. I'll put the batteries on two of those. Um, now keep them off the ground a little bit. You know, just in case there's any water on the ground, it won't get up. And maybe I'll put a few more drain holes. You know, just in case. Or maybe I, maybe I don't need these sides. I'll take these sides off. Yeah. Now, let me think about that for a second. Maybe I should leave the corners just to keep the batteries locked in. I like they shouldn't. They shouldn't be shoved around a lot. However, there will be times when I'm driving the boat in some rough seas and there will be some bouncing around and stuff. The batteries probably won't move, especially if they're on, you know, kind of absorbent material like this. Like that's going to take the shock of uh, any uh, waves, so the, the batteries probably won't move. But yeah, let me, just, let me just cut off these parts and I'll leave the corners just to kind of snuggle the batteries in a little bit. But if I cut these off, then if any water gets up in here, it'll be able to run off or down the middle. Or, well, it's not going to get down the middle because the battery is going to be covering that. Yeah. Okay. Let me get a knife. This also makes it so I don't have to figure out what to do with this packaging. Great. Hmm. Oh, it's glued on pretty well. Come on. There we go. Jeez, I need to sharpen this knife. This is usually my sharp knife. Uh, I wonder if one of my kids got it. That's beautiful. They come with their own little, little squishy cradle. So nice. Okay, these batteries are gonna go back here under these seats, and uh, the rear two solar panels will charge them. And the front ones, those will just connect directly to the motor. They actually already connect directly to the motor. There's four. Yeah, the four front solar panels connect directly to the motor, and the back two will charge. It's going pretty slow, but I think only two solar panels are actually in the sun right now. All right, batteries go under here. Put my little foamy thing, and then one will go under here too. Let's put the other foam. Uh, where do I want the terminals? I think I want them toward the back. 
Yeah, I think so. Pretty good. Lots of space in there. I can reach everything. Oh, wasp nest. What's wasp nest? Sure messy. Alright. Yeah, I could I could probably fit two batteries in this one slot. Whatever, I'll put them in each in different slots though. That way, uh, any heat from the battery. I don't want to have two batteries in the same spot because they'll both heat up the same area. And I need to put some kind of cover here so that water doesn't splash up or when it's raining sideways. I, I, I got to make sure no water gets to this. So something here. And then I'll probably put my speed controller under here too. So I want something that will cover this whole thing but will still let some air get through. So maybe... Maybe I'll have it come up under here and leave an air space so air can get through there. Oh, that looks so nice. Look at that. So good. I'll have to put a nice uh, voltage readout somewhere. Cut a hole in here and put a readout right in there. Most of the time I'm going to be sitting here, I think. I'll have to put one, one of my chairs here and one of my chairs here. One of my fancy yellow seats. And then I can see the voltage. I can do the speed control thing, which will be right there. I can reach this and the steering wheel. Yeah. All right. What can I, what can I put across here? Oh, duh. This is probably going to be my voltage readout. I think this has a voltage readout on it. So I'll have to put this somewhere where I can see it easily. But will not get splashed by water. Maybe I'll put it right up in the ceiling here, just above the, the steering wheel. I don't imagine it's going to get wet there ever. The roof is, is good. To get wet way up there, water would have to be... Yeah, I think it should be fine. Mount it up there somewhere, facing backwards. Or I could mount it right up in here. I don't imagine this is getting any water on it ever. Yeah. It's protected from any splashes by both sides. Not that water would get up in here anyway, but you know, there might be a crazy storm. And if for some reason this filled up with water, which it never would, it would still run out before it got up to here. Yeah, maybe that's where I put that. And I can see the voltage readout on that easily from where I'm sitting. And, you know, it's in a pretty dark spot, so I should be able to see the screen well. Wait, is it backlit? I think the screen is backlit. Okay, so charge controller up there, and then, yeah, I want the battery terminals toward the back, so it's the shortest distance. Okay, let's get the whatever. Oh my god, I love this boat. Oh, I love this boat. It's so cool. Okay, that space is four feet wide. A foot tall, 48 inches, 12 inches, and I'm thinking I could maybe use a piece of sheet metal to put across, and I want to bend the ends out toward the direction the water might come from. Just in case there's ever a splash, it'll hit, and then if the, the metal's bent back, it'll hit and be directed back out. Ah, good thinking, right? And I do have some maybe appropriate sheet metal for that. All right, I've got some nice aluminum, aluminum stuff here. Okay, this piece is eighth inch. I don't need anything that serious. Sixteenth inch would, yeah, that would be pretty good. But do I really need the diamond plate texture? I could go all the way back here. Oh man, that's going to be a pain to get one of those out. All right, maybe I'll just go with the diamond plate texture. It doesn't matter. Does it matter? I don't think it matters at all. All right, I'll pull one of these out, I think. Although I do also have some stainless steel. Aluminium, aluminum, or stainless steel? I think I'm gonna go with aluminium, aluminum. about where 
right. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll cut a little bit over here and fold that up. Yeah. snug at the front. Or the back. Plus, that is pretty close. Okay, bend that out a little bit and this out a little bit. Well, that is looking mighty good. Yeah. Oh, beauty! Alright, now we can start thinking about wiring this thing. Tricky thing about this is that I have to get to the back to put wires in. So I can put wires in from the bottom, but then I have to screwdriverize from the back. Which means I can't just stick it against the wall and make it inaccessible. So maybe I have to mount it with a hinge so I can tip it up, do the wires and tighten them, and then tilt, tilt it back down. Yeah, that should do it. Ooh, that is in a dark spot. Hopefully this is a back lid. I'll be able to see it really well. Nice. And I scratched in battery negative, battery positive, P negative, P positive for photovoltaics. Because um, this doesn't have any anything written on the outside to say which wires go where. It's all it's all on the inside. You have, you have to open it up. Which I thought was kind of silly. Like I want to be able to I want to know from the outside. Anyway. Ooh, nice. Alright, I've got charge controller, a couple solar panels up here, and a battery. First step, connect the battery to the charge controller. Negative. No, just the battery negative. Oh, come on, get in there. Oh, excellent. I've got a little readout of zero kilowatt hours. Ooh, 26.5 volts. I guess this just cycles through different 25. Do you have a temperature sensor? 25 degrees Celsius. What else does this thing have? What's zero volts? That's got to be the, the um, solar panels because they're not connected yet. So zero amps going in. Oh man, this is great. I love this. 26.5 volts. That's, that's the thing I most want to know. Ah, uh, I don't even know the temperature. All right, zero volts. Let's let's connect that zero volts to something. I just need to connect those two wires into the, the solar panel. Well, I've got some two-strand 12-gauge wire. That should be good for there. All right, those guys are all wired in and connected. And, oh look, my little battery's doing a blinky thing. I think that means it's charging. Oh, 26.6 volts. Slightly higher than it was, like mere seconds ago. Oh, 26.5, 20, 20, 26.6. Ooh, 1 1.6 amps coming in. Yeah, it's pretty cloudy right now. Still, good. So what is this kilowatt hour? Oh, is that a total of how much has gone in? Whatever, it's working. Okay, that's one panel connected in, and I have another solar panel on the other side I can connect in, so I guess I'll just do the same thing. Except this wire is going to have to run, I guess, across here, across here, and then come in. 
hopefully I have enough zip ties. I didn't have a long enough piece of that double strand wire, so I'll just use two individual wires up here. All right, second solar panel's in there. Looks like it's charging faster. And uh, I guess now I just have to wait for one battery to get fully charged. Then I can fully charge the other battery. And then I can connect everything. Well, no, then I can connect them to each other in parallel for what, like an hour or a day or something? Make sure they're, they're leveled out. Then I can connect it to everything. And uh, supposedly if I follow that procedure, I'll be maximizing the life of my batteries, which I think is worth doing. So. Oh, how you doing in there? Doesn't feel warm or anything. Probably doesn't heat up when it's charging. I mean, unless it's charging fast. Pretty secure. All right. Guess I'll come back and check it out tomorrow. Oh, I still have to cut the boards for the floor. Oh, I guess I'll have to find some wood for that. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I don't need floorboards in the front till I have cargo. <laughs>